uh, we want to welcome uh, Tegan and Sarah to our studios in the boardroom. Hi, how are you? Hi, Hi thanks, thanks for having you. us. <laughs> how do you like the heat down here? <laughs> well, we're getting used to it. It's almost, uh, <laughs> I was saying last night, we were just playing in Detroit. It was very humid, and, mm -hmm. you know, you start to get really used to it. It's almost like your body just accepts its its destiny that it has to play in all the humidity, and you don't have to work out as often, that's yeah. for sure. It's, it's not the heat, it's the humidity it's that's the humidity, really yeah. good show It's there, specifically huh? quite humid today. Uh, when quite. I got off the bus, I was like, <laughs> oh, boy. But uh, but we're making the best of it. it best of it, it makes us look um, like we're working really hard on stage, you know, <laughs> desperately sweating. <laughs> so uh, we want to say congratulations. You guys uh, just announced, I think, yesterday you're on the short list for the Polaris Award. Yep. Congratulations. Mm, thank, you. thank you. So that that's for the best Canadian album. Album. Is that what that is uh, by yeah, the Polaris uh, exactly. people? Exactly. That's that's essentially the premise. Is that you know a, a collection of, of uh, qualified people, critics, industry types. Um, they sort of narrow down what they think are the uh, the best records of the of the year. So we we've been nominated before. We haven't won, but as they say in the industry, it's just an honor to be nominated. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to go with that. Yeah, let's just go with that. We don't care about winning. And it's a nice little boost if you win as far as money goes, too, Oh, huh? absolutely, yeah. I, you know, I think it's more about, you know, the recognition and acknowledgement of our peers and the people in the industry. And, you know, the, to be nominated once was really an honor, but to be nominated twice almost feels better mm -hmm. just because it seems like it wasn't a fluke the first time. <laughs> Last year, Feist won the, uh, won the awards. Yeah. So good luck. That's coming Thank out in you, September, that, that announcement. It is, huh? yeah. Okay, well, good luck with that. So you guys have played with a lot of uh, big-name entertainers over the years. Uh, you've been out there on the road for about 10 years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. since, well, our first, our first record came out uh, in 1999, but we actually started touring in 1997, or sorry, sorry, 98 after we graduated high school. So... But uh, it didn't really get cooking or professional until the early 2000s. And I think probably Sarah and I both would pay a lot of money to erase those first couple of years just <laughs> just on haircuts and fashion alone. <laughs> yeah, well, you've played with Neil Young. Um, yeah. who, who else am I? Uh, oh, my goodness. Just this year. I mean, uh, we've David been on tour with Fun, and we've been on tour with uh, the Black Keys and the Killers. And we did one of our first big tours ever was with Neil Young and the Pretenders. So we've done a whole spectrum of touring, and it's been great. I mean, each tour you learn something new. and. I think because we were so young when we started touring, it was great to be out on mm. tour with other bands because you sort of get whipped into shape. You learn the rules of the road, and you learn to take care of yourself really quickly, and uh, I felt grateful. I think that's why we have such a strong foundation. And, and uh, I suppose some of those were our, our musical uh, uh, influences on you. Was absolutely. there somebody when you were younger that you really looked up to? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, icons for us, people like Bruce Springsteen, U2, Cyndi Lauper, Madonna, that that. Those, those sort of caliber of artists were the people that we really sort of, like, idolized. And, mm -hmm. and um, you know, now I think we have more sort of realistic um, uh, people who we would sort of fashion our own career or business after. Uh, maybe not, like, the big – I mean, we're not we – we have had some success, which we're very grateful for. But we are – I don't think we're in the same stratosphere as people like Madonna and Bruce Springsteen and Lady Gaga and that sort of thing. But there have been um, more, I guess, um, you know, blue-collar examples we've toured with people like – um, Ryan Adams, for example, Tegan mentioned the Black Keys. There have been bands that we've been on tour with where we can sort of say, oh, wow, maybe we could have a career like this, and here's how the infrastructure sort of works. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember feeling that way about Paramore. We toured with them a couple of years ago, and I remember that was one of the first times that I started thinking about more mainstream success, radio, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. They just seemed like people who we could, I guess, see as, as peers, as people that we could have a career like. And uh, so, yeah, it's always changing. You know, you think you know everything, and then you go tour with somebody who realize you don't know anything. <laughs> uh, you started out as indie rockers, really. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this change you're talking about came about. When, when did that happen? You thought, maybe we should go a little more pop for the radio. Well, it was actually seven years ago that we collaborated with an artist named Tiesto, and he was, like, basically at that time, and still probably considered the biggest DJ in the world. And he remixed our single, Back in Your Head, and he was doing a collaboration record where he was co-writing with other indie female artists, you know, Nelly Furtado and Emily from Metric. And we ended up meeting him and writing a song with him that ended up being really big in the dance world. And uh, we saw our audience grow. And we were like, well, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. We didn't get any radio. We didn't. It, there was no other way that this new audience was coming to us other than through him. And so we started collaborating over the last six years with all sorts of dance artists. Sarah collaborated with a hip-hop artist last year. I've collaborated with rock artists. And I think we saw our audience growing exponentially but very organically through other people's audiences and um, when it came time to write Heartthrob our new record I think we just we used a lot of those influences to help us sort of get to the next level and 
you know, we're alternative artists and we've always sort of been in the sort of um, cult underground, if you will. We always got called indie darlings and critics picks and that sort of thing. But we sort of saw ourselves as being more than that, you know, and not that we were ungrateful for the success we had, uh, you know, achieved and the things we'd accomplished. But, you know, as women and also queer artists, we were like, why not influence the mainstream? Why not pre- pre- you know, sort of project a whole different image and try to change things up, maybe shake things up a little bit. And it's worked and it's been kind of awesome. And we have like a really young audience in a lot of cities and stuff. So it's really nice to be kind of like out there. And and I think it's probably really good for them to see us in the mainstream. And, and I think also we've just been touring and playing for 15 years and we wanted to do something, something new. Different, huh? Yeah, we yeah. were like, why recycle the same ideas? Like we grew up listening to sort of upbeat pop sort of dance 80s music and stuff so it just seemed natural well heartthrob has uh, the two singles closer and i was a fool yeah and our audience loves those songs we get requests <laughs> for them all the time That's great. and is there is there more coming off that uh, album do you yeah we're I mean, we hope so i mean yeah. we'll ki- i mean the truth is is that we're the way the world works now you know like what's happening in canada is so exciting for us but we're really still like in oh my god it's i can't believe even we're saying this but early stages of the first single mm-hmm. in the u.s it's just such a monster down there so we're we're probably going to be touring for at least another year and a half or something. It'll be like so nine singles. Yeah, on we're the like record. we're hoping that Canada wants more singles because we'll definitely oh, be around do. to give them. You know, we do want so, them. Yeah. 